Infertility currently affects in excess of 50 million couples worldwide uh, who are struggling to have children. Many cannot access treatment and those that do often are not managed correctly without a positive outcome. The World Health Organization in 2004 quoted one in four couples in developing countries were found to be affected by infertility. Joining us now is Dr. Eze Obianuju, who is the CEO and founder of Love Foundation to help us understand this conversation. Good to have you, Dr. Obianuju. Good afternoon. Thank you for being with us. Uh, Dr. Eze, on a day like this, what comes to mind is assisted reproduction. Now, at what point should couples begin to explore assisted reproduction, in your opinion? Okay. Um, first of all, infertility is the condition where a couple have tried naturally to conceive for about a year. It's after one year of trying and keeping to the rules of trying anyway. But if I'm now to the my decision to challenge infertility. There are so many options to explore before getting to artificial reproductive technology. So on a day like this, what we're trying to say is start to look for help as quickly as you can. After one year of trying, try to get help medically. There are some simple treatments that can bring some couples out of the challenge that they are not facing already. But when all that has failed, then your health caregiver will definitely suggest artificial reproductive technology. Now, culturally, Dr. Eze, many easily conclude that it is the female folk that has the problem. Uh, how do we overcome this stereotype and the stigma that comes with it? Exactly, and that is why in a day like this, it has been put in place. Infertility is a couple problem. It is not just a woman's problem, neither is it just a man's problem. As a matter of fact, statistics put it that 30% of cases are usually of male factor origin, while another 30% is usually from skin factor origin. So we need to let this word out and create the awareness so that couples seek help together. Many of times you see women in hospitals, they are the ones running around, they are the ones that need to have their tests done, and the men are not there. A day like this is certified to create awareness to get the word out, to let men know that half the time they are also responsible for infertility in the marriage. So they should also join their wives and seek help as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very crucial point that you have made there. However, I want to find out, is there any connection whatsoever uh, between the eating habits and infertility? Oh, definitely. Infertility has a lot of factors that impact them. One of it is medical, uh, which has to do with the functionality and structure of the male and female organs. But another very important factor are the social factors. One of the social factors is mainly food. So a lot of the things that we eat these days as compared to the old times have negative impact on our fertility. These things go ahead to reduce the quality of sperm and egg cells produced by the male and the female body, thereby also impacting on the level of fecundity of these people. Mm -hmm. So it is important to note that what you consume can be a factor or a detriment to fertility. Right. Now, again, the major challenge for many couples is finance, especially when we talk about assisted uh, reproduction also. We have some foundations now helping couples, but what about government and other corporate organizations or even NGO? What do you know? Well, for now, we have some NGOs rising up, just like mine now, rising up to assist women or to assist couples as it were with the issue of infertility, creating knowledge, creating awareness, um, assisting in the areas of getting investigations done, and to some extent, assisting in treatment. My foundation recently, um, on Saturday, we had a road walk, and then we presented a, a couple with a treatment package. They didn't um, need IVF yet, just needed drugs. 
which the students have fought. We are able to do that for one couple. So there are a lot of NGOs that are coming up now and assisting people. And there are, there's a particular NGO in Lagos that actually helps with treatment. And that is where we are also going to have more foundation. So yeah, people are coming up to assist people, especially people with lived experience. Unfortunately, we do not have the policy in the government where people that are facing this challenge can, can receive assistance. It is so bad that even HMO do not include facility as part of what is covered for health insurance. And so that is where we need to start from. We are talking for advocating um, from the level of the government. People that are suffering from infertility, uh, it's not really um, their fault. They didn't wish it upon themselves. Mm -hmm. It's something that they, they came to live with. So there should be some level of, of assistance, even if it is including the basic investigations and treatment in health insurance. There are a lot of um, workers that have health insurance now, but unfortunately, fertility treatment, fertility tests are not usually covered under HMT. Right. Thank you so very much, Dr. Eze Obianju of Love Foundation. We wish we, ha we have more time to progress this conversation, but thank you for your contributions. Thank you so much for having me. Right.